for the Wii, James Cameron's Avatar, The Game. A title long enough that they managed to include a name drop and an indication that this is, in fact, a video game. Just in case the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 clear indications on the cover didn't do it for you. Now it is important to note here that the Wii version, I understand, is quite different from several of the other console versions of this game. You cannot play as the humans in this version. You cannot carry more than two weapons. I think I even heard something about there maybe being a 3D version for one of the consoles, and again, as far as I can tell, not for this one. This is set a while before the events of the movie Avatar, and it doesn't spoil anything in the film. So, another licensed video game. These almost always suck. However, this is by Ubisoft, and they actually supplied us with one of, one of the two only exceptions to this rule, namely TMNT, the other being the original Aladdin game. So, hey, maybe Ubisoft can repeat that success. They didn't do it with this one, but maybe they can someday. The game isn't great, but for a licensed video game, it's not too bad. You play as Rai Uk of the Anurai, one of the few surviving members of the Anurai tribe. Rai Uk watched the humans destroy his village and his people, and he has spent years studying their ways, teaching himself their language, in the hopes that one day he could take revenge. You're going to help him get that revenge. Yes, this really is a revenge story. Not only is it a different story and set at a different time than the movie, it's a different type of story than the movie. So you don't actually play as an avatar, and some people might think that that makes the very title of the game a filthy lie! But not me though, I like the Navi. By the way, I am assuming here that you have a cursory understanding of the basic concept of Avatar. Also, if you haven't already watched the movie and you're considering getting this game, I would recommend the movie first. The game is an entirely linear, third-person action game with a single RPG element, namely that of being able to upgrade your abilities in three different areas. Your two weapons, the staff and the bow, and your ability, Way of the Hunter. Way of the Hunter increases the Navi abilities. You have to fill a meter by doing well in the game, then once it's full you can shake the nunchuck, and then you have a short period of time where you're influenced by Way of the Hunter. The majority of the game has you running around the planet Pandora, fighting humans that start out with assault rifles and if they know where you are, they might also hurl grenades at you, and they later get to use rocket launchers. You will also fight the mechs, those dropship-like aircraft, and you yourself get to fly around on a banshee. But I'll get to that. Movement is very linear. Not only can you basically only go in the one direction to progress, when you're walking around on narrow tree branches and such, as seen in the film, you basically can't fall off. There's no being careful and making sure you don't accidentally step off. You can't. There are numerous shortcuts taken here in order for them to in order for them to, you know, actually get this game out on time. The main problem with licensed video games is that they're rushed, often glitchy, at times downright incomplete. This one isn't incomplete and there aren't very many bugs or glitches. The biggest problem I would say relates to the motion plus attachment accessory. The idea is you can take control of these so-called hellfire wasps provided you have the accessory and you can then use a wasp to get close to enemy installations, 
and supposedly attack and such, I could never really get it to work. You don't control the wasp by using the control stick, you do it by turning the Wiimote as long as the Motion Plus is attached to it. This is awkward at best, and often it really doesn't work at all. There are also times where it seems to mess up the pointer. Never at vital times though, and this is the first time that I've used the Motion Plus at all, so I don't know if it's the Motion Plus itself that's a little twitchy, if it's the game that doesn't interface with it all that well, or a combination. Anyway, among the shortcuts are the fact that you can't really jump on your own. When you get to an area where you have to jump, it'll prompt you to press the A button, and when you do so, you will jump. And this is whether it's a long jump, a short jump, any kind of jump jump, it'll do it, and it'll do it properly. This along with not being able to fall off was probably so that they didn't have to work in something where you can die from falling really far among other things. Also that the jump would have been more animation, more programming. They'd have to give you the ability to do running jumps, jumps from standing still, all the other luxuries we take for granted in non-licensed video games. I never died in this from falling. No matter how far I let Ryuk fall, he didn't seem to die. And the places where he sh should have been able to die, he just couldn't fall off there. There are invisible barriers. Your main weapon is the staff. Basically, you can do two attacks. A hard-hitting, more precise one by swinging the Wiimote forward, which is good for taking out a single enemy in front of you, and a bit of a sweep by flicking the Wiimote left or right. This is good for hitting multiple enemies and maybe knocking them back a bit. You can also almost chain attacks. As much as two or three. There's some focus on your ability to sneak. You don't enter a sneaking mode. You don't individually enter the sneaking mode. When you're hidden, the game will tell you. Ryuk will crouch down. You're hidden in tall grass, underwater, and from that position you can sneak close to an enemy and do a so-called stealth attack by pressing B. You'll be prompted to do a flick with the Wiimote in one of a couple of directions. If you time it right, you'll take out that enemy, although that doesn't mean that there aren't other enemies right nearby who'll see you, and you can't combine and take out several with one stealth attack. If you don't time it right, you'll miss. The guy will know you're there, and so will the ones in the vicinity. Fortunately for the stealth aspect, everyone in this game has a lousy short-term memory. Fortunately for the stealth aspect, I just said that, didn't I? Basically, the enemy will be ignorant of your presence, slightly alert, yellow, or entirely alert, red. Yellow means he's got his eyes open. If he spots you, he's gonna go to red. If he sort of spots you, but not entirely, he'll, from having been ignorant of your presence, he'll just go to yellow. If you manage to hide from all the enemies in yellow or red, they'll forget you within a couple of seconds. Also, at times it'll offer you to do a stealth attack, even though the person in front of you knows you're there. 